Hello, welcome and a very nice evening indeed. Today we want to continue our Let's Code MS-DOS series where we program in C for MS-DOS PCs. And today I want to revisit another demo scene effect. Last time we had the fire, which is already a pretty neat effect I think. And today I want to do something that I never did before. But I've seen it now in a bunch of videos, mainly on the Atari 2600 and also on the Amiga. In both cases this is a pretty standard effect and I think this is probably also due to the fact that I guess the Amiga copper chip can actually support rendering this thing. But on the PC with the VGA card we don't have much help there. It's basically a CPU intensive effect, which is probably why I haven't seen it in any of the 90s old school demos on the PC. But it's still possible to do it and you might need a bit more beefier CPU. So a 286 will probably be too slow, but on my 486, 33 megahertz it runs, actually pretty decent. And the effect we're talking about is the twister or the twister bar, which, um, yeah, I don't know where it comes from. I've just seen it in a bunch of demos. And the idea is that you have usually a bar that looks to be a square, and that is being twisted and that runs up and down the screen. And you can see here some uh, examples on this website. And it's probably a bit hard to imagine what it looks like when it's running. But um, yeah, I'm gonna show you a few examples from the 2600 and the Amiga so that you have an idea of what is possible. Our version will be a bit more simple but you can put text on there as well, etc. So yeah, um, there's a lot to be done. One thing while researching this topic that I found out is that the demo groups Desire and TriStar, probably um, TriStar and Red Sector Inc, also known as TRSI, did a wild demo back in 2012 at the party 2012. Uh, wild entries are basically everything's allowed and they did an overhead projector demo which sounds uh, really really cool um, because it uses no computers but they had some prepared slides and one of those slides was this thing here uh, so you basically have two slides this is the actual encoded animation and this is a raster basically and when we put the raster in front of the other slide and we move it to the left or right we can actually see the twister animation which is quite neat i mean it's a very simple animation just the twister running up or down depending on which direction you draw the slide but still i think this is a very neat hack and uh, yeah um, i like that you can see they, they had some other neat effects like a uh, Amiga boing ball rotating and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you should definitely check that out. Um, lots of other great demos, old school and new school, on puet.net. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but yeah. Other than that, let's get started. I've um, taken the fire program um, and ripped everything out. I changed, I introduced the um, sign table from our sign table video. One thing I changed here was to uh, make it larger, to have 4K entries in there, because with the twister bar we need a lot more um, temporal resolution, basically. And I fixed one bug. We used to have here a scaling factor of 256, which would lead to a negative value uh, in this case. So 255 is actually correct because that's the maximum amount that we can actually get in a byte. The byte runs from 0 to 255, so 
There was a slight mistake in the sign table video, but with 256 values it wouldn't yeah, it wouldn't come up actually, but with the enhanced resolution we actually see a problem here. So this is already known. Um, we are going to use the standard mode 13, no mode Y. I have a version on GitHub that has mode Y support, but it's actually slower because we need to switch around the uh, bit planes and stuff like that. We can probably code something more efficient here, but um, that would complicate the code. So I'm going with readability here and we are going to draw into off-screen memory and then just copy the whole page with very fast mem copy into video memory and that will be really fast on the 486 even though I'm using an ISA video card so if you have a Visa local bus or PCI it will be blazing fast anyway so mode Y will have even less of an advantage there but maybe as a homework you can write a more efficient mode X or mode Y implementation if you want. So our main function first, then we dive down into the actual algorithm. So we need some iteration variable here. Uh, we want to count the frame that we're currently in because that will determine the state of our animation. Um, then we also, do, what else do we need? Um, we definitely. I, what I want to have is some randomness in there, because otherwise the animation always starts in the same state. So I'm gonna initialize the random number generator, and I'm gonna take the initial frame to be somewhere one of the first 1,024 frames. So it's just arbitrary. You can put anything in there in the range of a word. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty okay. You see a lot of different states then. And we of course have to initialize the sign table. And afterwards we can set the graphics mode. I'm reusing here code from the VGA tutorial and the fire tutorial. So all that code here for the VGA stuff is in the VGA header which is also in the source code. Um, link to the repository is in the video description and as always you can have a look, play around with it and improve on it. I'm also gonna reuse the fire palette um, from the fire demo because I noticed it actually looks good here as well. It gives a nice glowing effect. And uh, furthermore we have a frame buffer variable here which doesn't exactly need to be far, but um, since it's 64 kilobytes, we rather do that and uh, we're gonna malloc that and it will be as large as the screen. So it's screen width times screen height, or in other words, it will be 64,000 bytes um, exactly. Okay, uh, we will have a quick check um, for the for the mode Y. I actually had to allocate all four bit planes, so I could run out of memory if running this from the Turbo C environment. Uh, which means I'm gonna check if malloc returned null, just to be on the safe side. And if that's the case, I'm gonna print not enough memory which is always good to check for. And we're gonna return an error code so that we know what happened. But if that worked, we will actually clear the memory. So the frame buffer will be set with a zero byte and uh, we can reuse the size of the screen. We could also make, at some point we could make a constant of that, but I'm lazy, I'm not going to do that today. Okay, this has set up the off-screen memory. We now have a whole page of memory to our availability. And as usual, we will do this event loop, more or less, thingy, where we wait until the keyboard was hit. If the keyboard was hit, we read the character so we don't restart the program accidentally by pressing enter return to text mode and then we are happy 
or we are already happy and we return with a zero. Um, every time we are drawing something actually we can we don't need that we can just move the whole memset thing in here just do it at the start of the loop which makes this uh, superfluous then we'll draw the twister and uh, we can we will be able to adjust the size and position the first one will be the x position the second one the y position and I'm gonna go 100 pixels to the right and start at the top of the screen I'll make it 128 bytes wide and 200 high and our current frame is frame and of course at the end we will increment frame so that the um, that there's actually an animation naturally and we will have to wait for the vertical retrace because we don't have any back buffer otherwise we will see screen tearing so this will wait for the screen to be in vertical retrace at which point there will be no picture being drawn and then we can update the frame buffer on the VGA card by doing a copy to the VGA pointer which is defined in the VGA header and we take the frame buffer and again we are gonna take the screen size and this will be very quick actually the implementation is uh, probably I don't know it's it's pretty good I think the turbo C implementation of mem copy it's pretty fast and that's already our main function so it's pretty simple we just clear the screen the off screen we draw the twist, we wait for the retrace, and then we copy the whole thing over and increment the frame. This is a pretty tight loop and a pretty fast one at that. So the next thing that we need is the um, draw twist routine. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at my cheat sheet. So the draw twist routine, uh, it doesn't return anything but it will take an x coordinate where we start and a y coordinate which I call x0 and y0 or x0 and y0 uh, we need a width and we need a height and we need a time t which is the frame number basically also we need a bunch of variables we need some kind of amplitude which says how much will this uh, wiggle this uh, twister we need a counter for our scan line and we need four coordinates because the twister bar has four corners and these are basically the four x coordinates of the projected twister bar and we will have also a modulation in the x direction so that it gives an extra twist that it makes these bendy waves along the screen that you saw in, in my examples otherwise it will look a bit more boring you can leave this out and try to um, play with this or you can for example set the amplitude to zero set this to zero or change the parameters this gives all kinds of interesting effects and you should definitely try and play with that so drawing the twister bar is actually pretty simple it's mostly one for loop in the um, y direction we start at y0 and um, we run oops we run until y reaches y0 plus the height and that's exactly that and that's pretty nice decent and then we can calculate the amplitude of the wave and for that we just look at the sign table and um, we think of some function that is both dependent on the y coordinate and as well on the temporal coordinate and for that I figured out that doing something like uh, the time times 16 to speed things up if you make this uh, smaller then it will be a slower animation 
plus y times 2, which gives us a certain waviness in the y direction. Modulo 1496, because this is the size of our sine table. This gives actually a pretty nice thing. Plus we need to scale it somehow. Um, and we scale it to a quarter of w, which is the width. And to be more efficient, we can do a right shift by 2, which is a bit faster on older processes like the 286 and 386. On the 486, it mm, probably is still faster. So um, doing bit shifts when you have something like this is always a bit advantageous. Um, same thing goes here. We can do, but we need to be careful um, because the bit shift operators have very low precedence. We could do a bit shift by four here to the left, and we can do one by one bit shift left by 1 here, which is the same as times 16 and times 2. And that should be good enough. And then we take the modulation. Let's put this somehow in the same column. Um, the modulation starts off with the offset and then adds another sine function, um, which we need to scale as well, so there will be another bit shift. But first we look into this thing and it looks basically the same. Um, we can we can we can take the same function and just change it a tiny bit. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering I need to take this whole inner part. Um, but we will change a little bit the, the time factor because and that will look a bit nicer if we... No, not the time factor, the y factor to make it more wavy in the y direction depending on the y coordinate, y screen coordinate. Um, again, you can just play around with different factors here and it will give very different results or you can even maybe animate that if you don't do powers of 2 maybe. Or interpolate. If you have lots of power you can use floating point here as well but we are doing it on very old machines and so we need to do all integer arithmetic so everything here is non-floating point and that is very important this is actually what makes it fast. So I think this should be fine. Now we can go to the actual projected x coordinates. And they look very similar. They take the X modulation always and they will add another sine function. And this sine function will look very similar from one X coordinate to the next. We will always take the amplitude and we will add something here. Um, in the first example, one, two, three, four, we will add a zero and I will explain in a second why I uh, just write this out so that it looks the same in every case and we will divide this by four to scale it down a bit otherwise it will not fit inside the um, 128 bytes that are set. Yeah all right um, so why am I doing this because I can now copy this and it will look almost the same for all four coordinates. These are the four corners of the bar. And the only difference is, if you think about rotating a square, um, then the x projection will be the sine. If you want to have the uh, y projection or the z projection into the, into the screen, it would be the cosine. Well, that doesn't really matter here, but um, since all four angles or all four corners are um, offset by 90 degrees, we need to um, shift the index into the sine table by 90 degrees. And the full table has 360 degrees encoded, and um, or 2 pi basically, and we need to shift by 90 degrees or uh, 1 pi. Is it true? I think so. Um, 
no, actually not uh, half a pi. Half a pi here, uh, one pi here, and 1.5 pi here, or 90, 180, and 270 degrees rotated. And this is done, in our case, not by adding pi or something, but by adding one quarter of our total number of entries, which in this case is 1024. And for the second, we need to add 2048, which is 180 degrees. And 270 degrees would be 3027, uh, 72, sorry. This gives us the projected X screen coordinates. Now we have everything that we need. Um, the A and XM were only used as intermediate values, which are then used to construct X1 through X4. Here's the A, the amplitude, and here's the modulation that we add on top of the rotation. Now we simply need to check if um, the line from x1 to x2 is visible and then from x2 to x3 is visible. And that is the case if the x1 coordinate is actually smaller than x2. That means we have x1 here and then we draw a line to x2. If it were the other way around, it would be the back side and we couldn't see it. So the only thing that we need to do is to test if x1 is smaller than x2, which means, yeah, we can see this part of the bar and we will draw a horizontal line from x1 to x2 with some color and actually also with some y coordinate and some color. And I figured out in the palette 33 is the color that we want. You can choose your palettes as you wish and colors as you wish. Um, that's totally up to you. I copied this four times because this whole thing now looks always the same. x2 versus x3. I will change the colors in a second. x3 versus x4. And then of course going the full circle x4 to x1. These are the four corners and only two lines will be drawn at any given time because the back side is of course not visible. At most two colors. It might be that you're looking straight onto a side of the bar then there's only one line being drawn. And the other colors that I figured out look nice are 49, 65 and 81 but you can choose whichever. Okay, um, will this compile? This will compile, but this will not link. And, oh, there are too few parameters to my lock. Um, that totally makes sense. Uh, what do we need? We need, of course, screen width times screen height. And now we have it, I think, four times, <laughs> three times at least. Um, Three times, yeah. We should probably make a constant of that. But not right now. Um, yeah. Still, this will not link because there's an undefined symbol H line. Which makes sense. Uh, we don't have the routine to draw a horizontal line. So let's take a look at the cheat sheet again. It's again a void function called H line. It takes one x coordinate and another x coordinate, a y coordinate, and also a color, which is a byte. So this is a pretty simple function because we it's no fancy brazen hem or anything. It's it's very simple. We just need an iterator. We also need to check if the y coordinate just for safety purposes. It should not happen, but I know I did a few oopsies and yeah. If the screen coordinate is out of range, then we just return. So we don't th thrash the memory, but you can try without. It should speed up a tiny bit, but this should be actually pretty cheap operation. And the i-coordinate we let run from x0, which is the start, um, to x1. And we only do that if, again, if 
we are not running out of the width of the screen. If you're doing something bad here, you won't overwrite any memory or run, run into the next scan line or anything stupid like that. And it will also be, if you do that, then it will be faster than drawing additional pixels. And then it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we just take the current X coordinate, which is, maybe I should, uh, let's call it X. I think that's nicer. I think GitHub it's still Y, but uh, yeah, it looks better if I call it X. So we plot it X and Y and uh, the color cow. And then to make it look even nicer, we just increment the color because we have a huge color ramp in our fire palette. And that actually looks pretty nice to have a kind of shading in there. And that's a pretty cheap, cheap way to do that. So it compiles, it links, question is, and does it run? It runs, but it looks weird. So I think um, some of my multiplication tricks, uh, shifting, bit shiftings didn't work. Let me quickly debug that and fix it. Now this also looks very interesting, and very stretched out. And there we have a very um, fortunate clipping on the right side. Uh, good that we clip clipping during the H line. All right, now we have it. This is the final result. Yay. So let's have a quick look at what actually went wrong here. So first of all, I had this left shift by eight bits because I wanted to multiply by eight, but it's of course two to the power of three is eight. And also in the end, after the whole modulation, we need to make this a bit smaller. So I forgot my division by eight. So this should be divide by eight or shift right by three. As I said, you can play around with the values. We can make a bigger loop by reducing this. This will give a bigger wave, basically. As you can see, it will twist more to the left. No, not to the left, but to the right, which also looks nice. And I think here you can see pretty nice on the different sides. And yeah, I think it looks pretty decent. It's also reasonably fast. Uh, 10,000 cycles is roughly equivalent to my 486. On a 3D6 it will already be quite a bit slower, of course. But as I said, um, I don't really know if we can make this faster on a VGA card. Um, there's no hardware acceleration for this. You could make the sides flat without the gradient and write a couple pixels at a time using either 32-bit instructions or using the VGA hardware by writing four bytes at a time with the same color. But of course that wouldn't look just as nice and yeah, I, I still think this is, this is pretty neat and looks quite decent. And yeah, next up would be not just to increment the color, but to map some texture on there, um, like greetings, like a text or something, or some, some other nice pictures, and uh, a lot of other variations that you could do on this. Um, yeah, I, it's even possible to make several bars intertwine in parallel and stuff like that. But um, at least on the older machines like the 486, you will run quickly out of processing power. And yeah, of course, on the more modern machines, you can get like, all kinds of hardware acceleration that helps you with that, or just the pure CPU power that lets you render this in much higher resolution much better. But we are doing retro stuff here. So this is for MS-DOS. This is uh, very, very retro. and. Yeah, now we know how to do that. It's basically just four sine waves intertwined and drawing lines in between those and modulating them in a nice fashion by using more sine waves on top of that. And yeah, take the source code and uh, play around with it. And other than that, it's uh, that's it for this video. Please uh, share the video on your favorite social media like and subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment as usual i'm always glad to read from you guys i'm sometimes answering but not all the comments and if you want to you can support me 
on Patreon for example or on PayPal or on Ko-fi and if you can't that's also fine um, uh, very much appreciated anyway that you watched and otherwise I hope to see you soon and uh, try out some demo effects yeah give me some feedback see you bye